Hi, I'm Michael from Warthorn Studios and this is another episode of The Hobby Hacker. Welcome to part two of our ruined road build. We're going to be making this beast. <laughs> oh dear. We're going to be making this. Um, if you've not seen part one, go check it out now. I'll... Uh, on the link in the description, I've not figured out how to do all this, chucking it on the screen thing yet. Um, in part one, we covered all the making of the little detail parts. We've got the little manhole covers. We've got the storm drains. We covered how to make all those on the computer. We then get those cracking out on the 3D printer as we get into the crafting. This episode is going to be all about the actual crafting and the painting and the finishing off. All right, sit back, get yourself a cuppa, and I hope you enjoy it. Right, let's get to it. I've cut out the pieces I need for the road. I've got a single section that's going to be our road. I've trimmed that down. Yeah, it's about six mil, just something random. I uh, just wanted it a little bit lower than the basic 10, although to be fair, 10 would have worked. I've cut two strips uh, that are slightly higher, and I've simply, yeah, as you can see, I've sanded in just with a little bit of sandpaper, a nice little curve on them. They're going to be my curb stones. I've got two strips of 10 mil which is going to be the pavement or the sidewalk and I've got those stood on a little bit of 5 mil foam core. Now the reason for that is I want this raised up so that the rest of the board, you know, where the buildings and the light go, the pavement is going to be set slightly higher, not a great deal, just 5 mil higher and that's going to... Uh, I like the look, it makes it stand out. It keeps the board from looking dead flat throughout the whole thing. So there's my pieces cut and prepped. You don't need to see me cut and foam, it's, everybody knows how to do it. So there we go. What I'm going to do is texture the pavements off. I'm going to be using, um, there we go. I'm going to be using one of my dungeon stamps for that. I just think it's going to give it a nice kind of paved kind of feel. I'm going to be putting little lines on here to represent the curb stones. We're going to rough up the edges of this a little bit. Uh, I'm just going to be using a standard texture stamp for that. Can we get a detail on that? Yeah, there it is. Yeah, there we go. It just to gives it a slightly broken up feel and we're then going to scribe some cracks into it. I've got printing the manhole covers, which you can see we've got one little one here. There we go. And the storm drains, again the test print here. And they're going to sit, storm drains are going to sit on the side. I'm going to have a little manhole cover going on over here, maybe another over here. But ideally, you'd only want one every other section. They're, they're not a common thing. I'm then going to be putting a few repaired areas on there, and I'm going to be doing that with a two-part putty. This is Milliput, and I'm going to mix that 50-50 with just plasticine. It still sets really hard. It just... This stuff's expensive. I don't like wasting money, so plasticine is a lot cheaper. And I'm going to texture the repaired parts with just a piece of rough sandpaper. This is 60 grit, and it's just going to put a little rough stippled effect over it. Very much the same as is already on the foam. Let's get to it. Let's start putting a bit of texture onto all of this.
perfect. So I've got six minutes left on the printer. Got to roll it all damaged up. So all I've got to do is punch in the areas for the grates and the manhole. Give it all a black bomb, come in, paint it, and then as a final thing, drop in my great and manhole cover. I'm going to put in all the recesses for the storm drains, which yeah, I'm going to put there and there, there and there, and turn around this way, I prefer it this way, and I'm going to put the manhole cover right there. So I'm going to take one of my manholes, I'm going to very lightly score around the outside of it just so that when we press the stamp in we really get a nice clean sharp edge doesn't take long and it's totally worth doing um, right if you just press it straight in what we get is really quite a messy can you see that you get really quite a messy kind of effect around the outside where the foam is sort of crushed. So we're avoiding that by putting this little score mark in it. will give it a nice edge to cut straight down from. Line up our little stamp that we made. Push it down. And we get a lovely crisp perfect outline and our little manhole just check it's pushed down far enough which now it is pushed down nice and straight everybody's happy too good a fit so we now have and that was with the little round stamp that we made and we now have the rectangular one with the little extra. And we're gonna use this for pushing in where the storm drains go. Now this will, in exactly the same way, give us a little crushed outside edge. But I'm less worried about that because it's all at the edges of the road and that's all sort of damaged anyway. So, oh, yeah, I'm quite liking that whole smashed up, crushed edge it's going to give me. So, we're all done. We've done all our stamping. We've done all our making. I think that's dry enough to paint now. I really do. So we're just going to black bomb this. Now, a mixture of black paint and PVA gives you a really strong, nice, durable finish. Now, I'm just going to be using this as a little display board, so I'm not going to bother. I'm literally just going to paint it with straight up black paint. But if you're making these for your games table or you're gonna make a big old six by four with them, then make yourself a mix of black paint and PVA and you'll thank yourself for taking that little extra time to black bomb it properly.
just a medium grey. Right, I'm going to get a little bit of PVA, quite a lot of PVA actually. Hit this with the hairdryer and dry it off first. Uh Now, obviously that white glue is gonna dry clear, which will mute it down a bit. It looks very, very vibrant, very in your face right now. But trust me, it won't be that finished article when it's done. And then I've got a little pot of sand. And I've got some little sort of gritty bits. And we're gonna sprinkle these over as well. with some watered down PVA.
Right, for the finals. So this is all dry. As you can see, you can, as I was saying, rub it a little if you want to blend that sand out in any areas. I'm gonna mix myself a wash up. I've got some sapia. It's just a transparent sapia. I'm using Curiostex illustration colors. I'm going to, now I would normally chuck in some matte medium, but I'm gonna throw in matte varnish with this. Instead, it'll have the same effect, but it's a bit tougher than the matte medium. I'm still putting a little matte medium in there. Super. So the matte varnish and the matte medium are both white to look at, but they will dry clear. And obviously that's far too thick right now. So we'll fling in a bit of reducer. If I can find it, is that it? No, nope, that's transparent clear, there it is. Again, a lot of reducer. Now, can we see, yeah, probably. This runs down really quick and it leaves behind a little film. So this is pretty close, but I want it I want to break the surface tension just a little bit more. I'm not liking the consistency, it's too watery and not washy enough. So I've got some just plain old glycerin. Can you? There we go. Just plain old glycerin from the supermarket. And that's got three drops of glycerin in. We might need a little more, but we'll start with three. Yeah, we need a little bit more. Let's put another two in, or maybe three. That's got another about roughly three drops in. Now, when that runs down the side, the film doesn't break up. It sort of stays consistent on the side of the pot. It's telling me yeah, it's just about bang on. So I'm going to apply that with the airbrush. Now I'm still applying absolutely loads, as if I'd brushed it on, as wet as if I'd brushed it on. But the reason I'm applying it with the airbrush is I want it to get into the grasses. And that with a brush is incredibly difficult.
Now we're getting really close to the end of this. We've got, oh, where's it gone? There we go. We've got our stencil for putting on the white lines. You've got choices all over the place here. We could place a stencil down, get a bit of sponge, white paint, and just daub it on as if it was yeah, rubbed off over the years. We could get the airbrush and spray it through so it's a nice, bright, but still quite thin. I'm going to go for the sponge on technique. Because I want it to look old and worn as if it was perfect once, but it isn't anymore. So our stencil is going to guarantee yeah, if we get any outside the lines, it won't be much. Alright, thanks for watching. I hope you found something in here useful at least. If you like it, smash that like button. If you want to see more of these builds, hit the subscribe. Any comments, chuck them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you're interested in any of the stamps and the rollers, I've got a Kickstarter running currently. Jump on Kickstarter, have a look for Dungeon Architect. I'll chuck a link down there. And yeah, see you next time.